right. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And uh, yeah, no time for, for introduction because I have only 15 minutes to convince you to switch to OKLCH. That's a hell of a challenge, I should say. So let's buckle up and start. Imagine that you work for a travel agency and you have developed this piece of interface, a product card. And the other day, a manager approaches you and say like, hey, uh, we need to recolor it to Cyan to support our winter uh, special offer and we need it like yesterday. How much time will it take? Before rushing to an answer, let's quickly recall what process actually it will, it will evolve. What, what uh, steps are you going to take? Well, if you are a UI designer, you will probably head to Figma and open up the file and select, I don't know, the button and then open the color picker and then move this rainbow stuff, I don't know, to somewhere, the cyan region or something like that. If you are an experienced designer, you already know how much trouble will it cause down the road, but let's keep it a secret for a moment. Then you will select, I don't know, a title and do the same, then paragraph, then icon, the background, and so on and so on. If you are a front-end developer, we will probably call your designer and ask them to deal with all this shit. So, how long will it take to, to recolor this interface from red to cyan? Let's do a quick poll. Show your hands if you think that it will cost you 10 minutes or more. All right, a minute, minutes, okay, 30 seconds. Okay, so you probably know about HSL already, my pleasure. 10 seconds, will it take 10 seconds to recolor it from red to cyan? Two seconds. Okay, yes, and actually that's the correct answer. It can take just zero, zero seconds, seconds to recolor this interface from red to cyan if you use OKLCH. Okay but <clears throat> don't trust my words and check yourself. Here is red interface, original red interface, and uh, manager asks, uh, let's recolor it to cyan and let's do this. Three, two, one, boom, here is cyan. Uh, if this hypothetical manager will ask us for uh, orange, for example, yeah, here is orange. Green to support a spring uh, special offer, yeah, here is it. You know what? Take whatever color you want, manager. And that's all works, help, uh, thanks to OKLCH, which is translated as lightness, chroma, and hue. So what is OKLCH? Okay, LCH is a color uh, CSS color function and color model. What is color model? Color model is a mathematical way of defining a color with some numbers. Take RGB, for example. RGB defines a color with red, green, and blue. By mixing up red, green, and blue values in different proportions, RGB produces the whole range of colors. Sounds great? Yes, but... RGB is very incon inconvenient to work with for us humans. Because in real life, we need to do only three things with a color. We want to make it darker or lighter, less or more saturated, and we want to play with its hue without side effects. And none of this task is achievable <clears throat> in controllable uh, manner by juggling red, green, and blue values. Just take a look at the color picker of RGB. I have no idea where to move the color picker, uh, the color prop, in order to make the color darker, for example, without messing with the hue or saturation. So to make RGB a little bit more convenient to work with, engineers develop HSL color model. It defines the very same color, but differently. Instead of useless red, green, and blue, it gives us a set of three much more convenient handles. Lightness, saturation, and hue. Wow, cool, now I can do some stuff with the color. I can change the, the, the lightness, I can adjust the saturation, I can, uh, I can play with uh, hue and do it independently. So cool, let's do another, call, uh, another poll. Uh, here are two colors set up with HSL. Both of them are of the same lightness. Please show your hands if you believe that these two colors, when I reveal them, will be of the same lightness, meaning none of them will appear darker or, or lighter. No one believes, okay. 
Uh, do you think that the first color is lighter than the second one? Show your hands. All right. And show your hands if you believe that the second color is lighter than the first one. I congratulate you. You are wrong. First color is yellow, and the second color is blue. But HSL doesn't give a shit. It says that both of them are of the same lightness. But in fact, the difference between these two colors is so huge that you can easily read yellow text on top of a blue background. And that's not a hallucination. In this universe, for these carbon-based life forms called human, blue appears much darker than yellow. But why? I've been fascinated by this question for many years, and I found the explanation literally just a couple of months ago. And here it is. Light wave sensitivity and the display technology. Normally, without any conditions, our eyes perceives green as the brightest color of the spectrum. This feature of our vision is described by, by luminous efficiency function. But yellow and cyan appears even brighter than yellow. Why? Because of display technology. You all know that our uh, monitors consist of a bunch of pixels, and each pixel consists of three sub-pixels of red, green, and blue. By adjusting the lightness of these sub-pixels, lamps, if you will, uh, displays reproduce the whole range of colors. To produce red, green, or blue, display lights only one subpixel, which delivers only one unit of light into our eyes. However, to produce yellow, cyan, or magenta, displays lights two subpixels, which delivers two units of light into our eye, which we perceive as a brighter color. So let's recall, uh, uh, do, do recap. Uh, blue is not very sensitive for our eyes. Moreover, displays light only one subpixel to produce it. Yellow, on the other hand, is a product of two subpixels lighting at the same time, one of which is green, the brightest color of the spectrum. That's why blue is objectively darker than yellow. And a good and convenient color model should take a consideration. Uh, and uh, OKLSH does. Uh, yellow color in OKLCH notation has a uh, lightness value very high, almost 100, because, uh, yeah, that's a not very good uh, screen projector. Actually, this color is very, very bright, almost white, so the value is very high. Da uh, blue is kind of a dark color, and the light uh, value of such a color quite low. And that's why it takes me nothing to recolor the interface. I just uh, set up an OKLCH with high enough lightness for background and another color with low enough uh, lightness for the, for the text. And this difference between lightnesses of these two colors secures the readability and contrast of the interface regardless of the current hue value. And that's the first reason to switch to OKLCH for consistent contrast. In other way, for accessibility almost for free. The second reason to switch to OKLCH is that OKLCH allows you to build interfaces with dynamically adjustable colors. Uh, modern uh, services very often offers uh, these settings to user to change the accent colors. With OKLCH, instead of having a set of fixed static color palettes, which is quite expensive to support, you can apply any hue that you want without dealing with accessibility issues. For that, you need, everything that you need is just set up colors only one with fixed lightness values. And after that, you can plug the uh, scroller value to, um, to hue parameter of all these colors. Give the slider to your users and they will set up the exact color that they love. Well, we can do the same with HSL. What's new? Let's check. Here is HSL. It looks similar, but in some values, the readability of the interface drops very significantly. Again, this projector, I hate you, you know? That's, <laughs> that's much better here, believe me. Um, you know what you can do even cooler? You can retrieve primary colors from images and colorize interface like automatically to match these images. 
Just think about what interfaces you can build having this feature. That's, that's great, I think. And finally, the third reason to switch to OKLSH, OKLSH gives you 50% more colors. I repeat, 50% more colors. That's something that's uh, often overlooked by designers and developers, but that's huge in reality. Where all these colors come from? Well, this color blob called CIE1931 color space, and it roughly represents the whole range of colors that our eyes can possibly see. Modern technology have their own limitations, so they cover just a portion of this uh, color blob. Um, we discussed previously red, green, and blue subpixels, but what's exact red, green, and blue used for subpixels? Well, older screens were capable of not very deep and rich red, green, and blue. And they produce just a small fragment of all the colors that we see in real life. And this triangle represents sRGB color space. Color models such as HSL, HSB, RGB, they define a color inside RGB and only inside. And sRGB is so old that in fact we've been using it for 24 years. You know what was released roughly at this, at this time? Nokia 3310. <laughs> sRGB is that old. Nokia is even a little bit younger. But times goes on, uh, new technologies come in, and modern uh, displays are capable of much uh, deeper and richer red, green, and blue, so they can produce much more colors. And this triangle represents P3 color space, which is much bigger than sRGB. And all modern devices, all modern smartphones and laptops have been supported uh, P3 for years, and all these vibrant, rich, deep, colors are inaccessible if you use RGB, HEX, HSL, HSB notation. Like, forget about them. Forget about making your website looking juicy on iPhones and MacBooks and other modern devices. As long as you target sRGB, you belong to Nokia 3310 era. Meanwhile, meanwhile uh, industry-leading companies such as Versal are adopting Okay, LCH and P3 colors right now. Here's the tweet by Versal Designer where he's showcasing their switch to OKLCH okay, to obtain a richer look for their landing page. So what are you waiting for? Give OKLCH okay, a try in your next project. Thank you very much. Thank you. 50, sharp. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so, and we have five minutes for questions. Is there the, um, let's say, if all the browsers right now support it, because I guess they are supporting it, yep. there is any kind of device or something that is struggling with this? For example, the projector we have right now? Um, <laughs> yeah, I believe this one, definitely. <laughs> uh, also, it's not supported by uh, Opera Mobile for Android or something Why like that. Opera never support anything. Op op <laughs> Opera browser, browser, <laughs> Opera browser. Yeah, 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 no yeah. One, no one. yeah, 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 yeah. And um, yeah, maybe some older devices. Yeah, they also can't uh, deal with OKLCH, okay, but yeah, mainly it is supported like for two years at least. Okay, nice. Thank you. On that note, then, what will be the fallback? The will fallback. it break mm -hmm. or? Um, so there are two types of fallbacks. One of them doesn't exist. It's uh, if a browser doesn't support OKLCH okay, color. It, no, sorry, I, I will just dial down a little bit my s space speed, I mean. Uh, so if browser doesn't support OKLCH, okay, they just don't like display it because yeah, they don't know what, what do you mean. And uh, there is a fallback from P3 color to sRGB color. And that's done automatically. It's uh, part of uh, CSS spec, and like, you, you shouldn't be like, worried about it. Anything else? Like, how to use it in Figma? Fig does Figma support it? No? 
how to use it in Figma. <laughs> All right, so yeah. I Yeah, actually, it's not our plugin. Plugin calls uh, OK Color, and uh, uh, it allows you to set up uh, colors in OKLCH formats, and it just basically translates it under the hood to RGB because Figma doesn't work with anything apart from RGB-based color models. <laughs> All right, yeah, the, the, the question if, uh, is uh, if I heard something about the role implementation of OKLCH, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I didn't uh, because all of them follow the spec as far as I understand. Yeah, and it's, it's just some cover now, like they use the spec role. Uh, yeah, okay, that's, that's about, uh, again, if I remember correctly, it's when you get out of the uh, P3 like borders, uh, then browser starts uh, implement like a wrong kind of fallback uh, function. But I would say that that's cool that they do this because sometimes, and actually my uh, demo relies on this uh, not correct implementation fallback. Uh, for example, like here, I set up, like here, I set up quite a high uh, chroma, and not all colors, not all hues support such a high chroma. But thanks to this wrong uh, fallback function, it sometimes you know, changes the hue. So for example, here I have um, yellow, and yellow is quite a uh, bright color. There is like no opportunity to make such dark yellow and keeping the chroma, but it manages somehow. Yeah, again, it's not visible here, I'm sorry. Uh, and it, it just changes the hue. It makes it a little bit uh, like closer to orange space because orange allows you to have a lot of like chroma and that's a good kind of bug. I love it. What did they fix it? <laughs> well, I will rebuild my demo <coughs> in this case. I have a quick question. Yep. Uh, LCH stands for lightness, chroma, and hue, but OK, what does it stand That's for? That's a great question. I have no idea what stands uh, OK LCH for. I take it for awesome. Awesome lightness, chroma, and hue. That's it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, thank you very much. Thank you.